This is JLo. JLo is one of my rescues. She's learned to push through pressure. If she feels very much pressure at all, she will try to get away from you. And if she can't, she'll go straight up and try to escape. As far as presenting a halter and asking her to be haltered, it's just not there. You could have a wild Mustang that actually has less reactions than this. All right, so this is my first time working with JLo. My goal would be to put a halter on her and help her get through some of the pulling, pulling away and rearing up uh, behaviors that she has. Uh, but the number one goal is to make friends with her. Definitely when she gets scared, she gets reactive and she's, she seemingly has kind of learned to just kind of use her speed and athleticism and size to kind of push through things. And so that's one of the big things that we're gonna to try to not do um, is, is teach her to push through pressure at all. Now I have a kind of a lunge whip thing and you guys don't see me use these very often, but what I like about this for getting a, a feral horse or a Mustang um, gentle is it's a much longer extension of my arm. So I can kind of start this process out here. So, okay, so I, I brought, brought my stick up and you can see that bothered her. So I'm gonna leave it there until she faces me and then I'll take it away. And one of the things that um, you'll learn from playing with Mustangs or feral horses is how important space is to them. Um, and so there's a big difference to them. If I move my feet closer, you can see I could, I could get closer to her by doing this if I'm not moving a tool. And what you don't want to do is move your arm or your stick and string at the same time and go like that. That can be too much pressure. So before I try to get any closer to her than this, I'll just see if I can get her okay with me waving uh, this around without trying to move my feet any closer to her. Real quick, I'm going to interrupt this video to let you guys know if you would like to see more detailed training videos, including the ability to ask me questions about your horse or send me videos for coaching, you can do that on my Patreon page. Right now, it's only $10 a month, but it's going to be going up to $20 a month in January. So get on there now while you can, and that way you're locked in at the $10 price. Can't wait to see you guys there. So it's kind of like trying to gain kind of every inch of space. And anytime she looks at me, I'll kind of retreat right there and then take it away. Now, one of the things that you also have to be careful of here, and a lot of people aren't aware of this, you can get a horse like her too sweet on facing you with two eyes, and then you can't get anywhere else around them. And so, yes, I wanna kinda of start with teaching her to look at me with two eyes, she already knows that. And so I don't wanna camp out on this, uh, this idea or this release too long, because it can make it harder to get past their eye. And so I don't mind hanging out a little bit back here on her side. You can see her facing me, that's okay. But then I'll just go ahead and move my body over here to the side. And then that bothered her. So now I'll just kind of follow her here. So I, this, that's what I mean by I'm not gonna camp out, just I'm not gonna release her every single time she faces me because they'll learn to face you and they won't let you any closer and they won't let you around them at all. But basically anytime she leaves, and this is why we're in a round pen, anytime she leaves, the pressure is gonna follow her and stay with her. Anytime she softens and gets relaxed, then I'm going to retreat away. And so it, it doesn't matter. Um, that, that's why we're in a round pen. It's like a lot of people don't realize that all those little things mean something to a horse. So right now she's a little tight, a little bothered. So I'm just going to stay here, observing that she's a little bothered by this. I'm, basically, I'm in her bubble a little bit. Give her a little release for, for facing in versus turning away. So again, I don't want to release her a million times on facing in, but I, that's still a better option than turning away from me. Grabbing a little bite to eat, a little bit of fast food. Now she kind of got a little closer to me there, so I'll let the stick and string touch her. But like there again, you could see that <laughs> even though now it's interesting, you can see I'm behind her and she whirled back into me. And what that is, is she doesn't want me to be the one dictating where she goes. She wants to be in control of where she's traveling. And so for now, I, I don't care which way she goes, I'm just gonna follow her and she's gonna get no relief from me putting a little pressure on her with my stick and string as long as she keeps moving away. But when she softens, see right now she's tense, she's braced up, she's alert. That look on her face, if you guys can kind of see that, we call that being hyper alert. And as soon as she softens right there, the pressure can go away. 
And so I, it doesn't matter that I don't have a rope on her right now. I can still be playing these, these kind of psychology games and building her, her confidence with me kind of being around her. Now, if I can get her drawing in, that would be really big because uh, the less I, the more I can go away from her, um, the better. If I keep having to approach her, then that's kind of innately scary. You can see I'm able to get in her bubble. I want to get closer now, so I take this away and watch. Now I move my feet. She acknowledged me moving my feet, and now I'll try to bring the stick and string in closer. So you can see I'm doing those one at a time, not together. So I moved my feet a little bit and that was too much for her. Now she walked away that time and I like that. She, she walked away, she didn't burst off away that time. So that was good. And again, this is different. You know, a lot of people would just start pushing her around the round pen, but she's already afraid of me and wanting to move away. So why do I need to push her around more? You know, that would just be to tire her out. Um, I'd rather just play kind of these games. But a lot of people would see this as slow progress because she's not facing me, but you, I'm telling you with these feral horses, you want to get them comfortable all the way around them, not just facing. It can be really hard if they only learn to face you. Um, it can be really hard to get all the way where you're all the way around them. So again, I'm just going to kind of shadow her here. Wherever she goes, we go with her. I don't want her to think at any way that I'm going to try to make her stand still. Now I know this horse has had a halter and lead rope on, so she does know how to follow a feel. Um, and as soon as I can get a halter and leader up on her, that would be a good goal to have. But I'm not going to be in a hurry to, to do that because right now you can see how she would have a lot of reasons. If she's going to leave here at Liberty, she's also going to leave with a halter and, le and leader up on her. And so what I've learned from working with Mustangs is that you're better off taking your time at this phase. So now that she's kind of, I feel like she kind of knows this game and she's kind of playing a game with me more than I'm playing a game with her. So now what I'm gonna do is if she leaves, I am gonna get a little noisier and I'm gonna push her around a little bit. So I don't really wanna touch her with anything. I just kinda wanna keep pushing her around and let her know that I'm actually the one driving her now versus me just following her. But it's okay to kind of take your time with that and let that build up gradually. You know, I don't want to come in here and start driving her immediately. Now, see there, she wanted to slow down, and I said, no, go ahead and keep going. So now it'll be me deciding when she gets relief and, and gets to stand still. And the way I'm going to let her know that she can stop is I'm going to, I'm going to take my energy down, and I'm going to step in front of the drive line here and let her face me there. <clears throat> And then we're going to work this other side here. Now, if they leave when you're in that position, let them leave. I don't want her to be afraid of me being close to her. Once she's further away from me, then I'll go ahead and drive her. That's a really important tip right there. You know, when you see them leaving, it's tempting to start driving them right away. But they can very quickly associate that pressure with you, and then it makes them harder to catch the next time. But see, while she's trotting around here, she's <clears throat> getting to getting kind of used to the stick and string. Now there she stopped on her own. And this is one of the things that could be a little bit challenging with her. Is she, in her mind, she's still the one dictating kind of who's doing what and what's happening in here. And that's the part that we need her to turn loose to, is her, <clears throat> her letting me be the one to dictate when she gets to move and when she doesn't.
So her putting her hip to me right there is a little bit more of a defensive position. So I'm going to start making that uncomfortable. Now I get the impression she's already kind of learned to leave um, because of how much she's really dictating things. And so I'm kind of giving her lots of chances here to understand things, but if she continues to, um, to just leave and kind of her setting the pace, I probably would be better off having a line on her and not letting her control that as much. Because you can see without me adding any more pressure, she kind of just comes and goes at her own leisure. Um, well, that's better. And let her leave. And we're going to go ahead and change uh, change strategies. So you you uh, I'm sure we could stick with that for quite a while, and eventually it would work and get better. But I, I just I don't get the impression that that's very meaningful to her. It's too easy for her to just come and go, um, kind of as she pleases. And if you didn't know how to use a Larret rope. Um, there would be nothing wrong with moving her feet more and taking your time and just giving, adding time to that and waiting for her to get more comfortable. But since I know how to use a lariat rope, um, I believe this would be more effective way to do this. If I thought she was so wild that I couldn't touch her, I would rather get her tamer and more gentle before putting a rope on her. But because I think she's just leaving because she's like, I, don't, I just, I'm choosing to leave. That's why I would go ahead and put a, put a rope on her. Um, sooner rather than later. If I stand upwind from her here, this might make this a little easier. There we go. So now I just want to let her wear that a little bit. I don't want to need to get a hold of her real strong or you can see how bothered she is going to eating right away. And that to me, again, that kind of reinforces this idea that she's kind of just leaving whatever she wants to. So like right there, she's leaving. So I'm just gonna put a feel, put a feel, and release as soon as she faces. So now with having a connection to her, every time she goes to leave, I can make that uncomfortable, more obviously uncomfortable without me having to drive her around and scare her with, pushing her around at liberty. Every time she faces up, she can get relief. Okay, she went to leave, put a feel, good. Now, another thing that's kind of interesting, when you're working with a Mustang or a feral horse, it's actually kind of a big tipping point when they're on the inside of the pen and you're on the outside <laughs> walking around them. Now, so any of you that were watching this video and you thought to yourself, I don't know if I'd put a rope on her just yet. I think I might stay at liberty a little longer. I think this kind of shows how within less than a minute, I can spend more time with her following me and me walking away and less time pushing her and chasing her around. And this is where I think it's beneficial to be able to use a Lariat rope. Because there's a lot of people that have a misconception. They think, well, that's just a, more of a cowboy way to do it. Um, which usually it's cowboys that are handier with a rope. But you can see I'm, I'm spending less time now with her being wrong, with her doing the wrong thing. We're spending a little more time with her doing the right thing here. And that's the name of the game. And so I wanna just have her follow me a bit. I wanna establish a few more of those yields with the rope before I focus on touching her. So at this point in the training session, this is where I wanna alternate between building confidence and asking her for a yield. So asking her for a yield is her following me and yielding the hindquarters and following me. Building her confidence is when I'll stop doing that and I'll approach her and I'll ask her to get comfortable with me petting her in some way. And sometimes I use my hand for this, especially if my goal is to spend time being by the horse, very, being very close to the horse, here's the yield. So we have confidence and we have yields and these are the two things that we're gonna chip away at here. And that, that really will be the, the main outcome for this because the more I can turn and walk towards her and the more she can follow me, the better chance we have of not needing to put a rope on her next time when we wanna catch her. So here's the approach for confidence. 
give her a little pat. Before she leaves, I'd like to leave and practice just having her following me. Now here's another interesting thing. So the lariat rope, I have way, way less control over her than I would with a halter on. Um, the halter, you have a ton more control, but also the halter is a lot more input to a horse and actually will cause a horse to feel more claustrophobic than just the lariat rope. The reason is the lariat rope, even though it tightens on her neck, it, it's not taking up as much surface area on her. And typically that's why a horse will actually accept following a feel from a lariat rope quicker than just a halter lead rope. There she's going to leave. I'll just step back from her and put a little pressure there. Because again, I, I don't have, I have a, uh, a, 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 a like perceived control. I don't actually have control over here. But just the lariat rope, um, it, it would be very easy for her to move move around but I, w I don't I'm not in a huge hurry to get a halter on her either because I do think that this is an easy rope for them to accept following a feel on to kind of get started with and see we just need to keep chipping away at that right there where see she kind of goes I'm looking at something over here but really all she's doing is getting into a defensive mindset and that's her kind of on the lookout for danger. And, and that means that even though she's not seeing me as danger exactly in that moment, she's looking for danger, which is a prey animal thought. And that's why we want to put a feel like right there and go, don't, you don't need to have a prey animal thought. <laughs> Stay connected with me. And so when we talk about mental connection with a horse, this is what we're talking about. It's like, can her mind and ears stay with me as I'm moving around here? <clears throat> Very good. Now you're gonna see me keep uh, repositioning this lariat rope here because if she pulls away and I have to put a feel on it right there, I don't want it to slip on her neck. And that's why, and she would get rope burn if it slipped too much and if I put too much pressure on. And so I don't wanna do that. So that's why you'll see me. Plus I'm kind of putting my hands where they need to be um, in order to, to put a halter on her eventually. There you go. So this is a little change here. Let me in past her, her eye and her shoulder here. This is good. And for me, this is one of the most fun steps in the process because this is where you take a horse that previously wasn't really trusting you and, and teaching them to kind of connect with the human and, and, and her learning that she can actually feel better with a human than what she felt standing in the pen on her own. And so for me, this is one of the the more satisfying moments of, of, of taming a horse. And so here's another point that I'd love to make about this is right now this horse needs taming, not training. Taming means she's gonna start giving up on her prey animal instincts and start turning loose to um, a human. And so basically we're asking her to just be less instinctual, less defensive um, before we start trying to teach her like specific tricks, so to speak. Um, basically, we need to teach her that she can find relief with a human. Um, she, can, she can connect with us, and we can teach her that um, she can follow a feel from steady pressure, which is what I'm asking her for now. See, she's kind of bowed up, and then the ears change, so I let go there. Good. And you can see that's getting lighter and lighter. She's following that feel better and better. Now, another thing to keep in mind, a horse has two sides, so you don't want to just camp out on one side. You want to help them get gentle on both sides. She felt like she needed to move. So instead of having her back away and having me follow her, I'm going to ask her to follow me. So it's, again, it's just a bunch of these little, little adjustments that makes the difference. Um, but I think especially now at this point in the video, you can see the difference of like, I don't know how long it would have took trying to do that at Liberty, <laughs> but you can see we're putting a line on her. It'll, it's allowing me to spend a little bit more quality time with her in close. And even though there's a line on her, look at all the slack that's here. I'm not making her stay here. I'm just have a very black and white way of making it uncomfortable if she chooses not to stay here. So we're gonna go ahead and try to put a halter on her now. She's giving enough to steady pressure here that I think we'll have a chance of this. So I'm gonna take my lead rope off the halter. 
Now, she could bolt away at any time when I'm doing this. What I like to do is I put the coils between my legs and then I can let them feed out versus if I set them on the ground, things can get messy or pretty quick. But I'm gonna need both of my hands to do this. So you can see her kind of blocking me here. Yeah. And if this is too difficult, the next thing I might do is I might just use the layer rope to make a halter with. And uh, that can be an easier way to do it too. She's very good at outmaneuvering us. You can see she knows the positions that we need her standing. And that's where she kind of ev evades that. So we're gonna do a lot of resets. And that'll get less and less, but if you didn't know, if you let her get relief every time she went to those, those positions, um, it pretty quickly could end up with a horse that learns how to not be haltered. <laughs> now, you saw I was previously trying to put this piece over her nose and that wasn't working so well, so then I went and tried this. This way is the better way to do it. You just have to be able to be closer to the horse. And there's a lot of Mustangs that won't let you in that close, and that's where I kind of use the other strategy a lot. Um, but you can see she handled that pretty well. I think I need to put a little longer lead rope on her just so I give her more room to drift. So I'm gonna put this rope on her now, attached to the halter. Gotta be careful to not snap it real loud. Cause again, I don't want her to get afraid of me being in here close. Now, and as I get the halter off of her, what I'm gonna do is be a little bit strategic, or sorry, not the halter, the lariat rope. And I'm gonna let this rope get around her a little bit because she kinda needs to get used to things touching her in different places. And what I like about this rope is being long here is this rope can follow her wherever she goes. And so what I'd like her to do is step one front foot through it. So you can see how that kind of got her, got her bothered there. Good, I just wanted her to think in a little bit there. And so this Lariat Rope, I posted a YouTube short video on this. Tom Dorrance used to say, there's not a bad place on a horse to hang a rope. And so if she's got to get used to ropes being kind of all over her, this is a great way to help a horse get gentle. So I could use a stick and a string and put that all over her. Um, but you know, she gets scared of that and I'm standing next to her. She can associate that with me where with this, she's having to deal with it with me out here at a distance. And so she can go do some work out there. And then when I bring her back in close to me, it's going to sure try. Now, because I have it around her, her shoulders there, it's not gonna slide back and it's not gonna get too tight anywhere. And so then the rest of this rope here, I can practice letting it touch her in different places, like on her back and on her hip. Very good. We'll go ahead and change directions here. Again, just fidgeting around, just messing around. Just kind of seeing how comfortable she is with different things touching her. Now we can do something else that's kind of fun. I'm gonna put a feel on this rope that's on her chest. Oh, <laughs> that got her a little tight. So you can see that made her feel claustrophobic. That's why she went jumping around there. And so she's a fairly tight, nervous horse, you know, because you could have a wild Mustang that actually has less reactions to the rope than this. Um, she's, she very easily feels pretty claustrophobic, which is why um, some of the footage that you've seen with her rearing up in the barn aisle, um, why you can see how that was tough. Now, here's another thing. Imagine fast forward with this horse a month of training or so, and you're ready to put a saddle on. If you've done this step with them, you've already gotten her used to steady pressure without introducing her to a saddle. So as long as she gets okay with this rope by the end, she won't have any negative associations with the saddle. 
when you're ready to put that saddle on for the first time. <clears throat> the further back on her the rope goes, down to the hind legs, the more difficult it is. The further up on the horse the rope is, the easier it is. So it was easy on her neck, and then it got harder when I moved it back to the shoulder. I don't think she's ready to handle the rope being any further back on her, so I wouldn't put it further back on her today. Um, but I'm kind of happy that we, we did this because I think you're going to see um, that she's going to accept a lot of other things a lot easier after this. Like see there, she's kind of getting okay with me pulling on it. But the reason she's having that reaction is when I say she's not tame yet, that made her feel claustrophobic. Something kind of had her. And that is just an innate, you know, instinctual response for a horse to kind of panic there and get worried. And so that's what we're doing with this training session is we're asking her to, to not go to those prey animal instincts. Now, I think we'll stick on this theme here for just a second. I'm just going to let her pack that rope around on her back there. Again, someday we're going to want to handle those hind feet, get her feet trimmed. It's not go that way yet. You can see, just by letting that rope hang on her there, and there's no commitment on my end because it's not actually attached, so if, if, if things went south, I could just drop it all and it would all work out. So yeah, you can see she wants to keep facing up and I'm trying to spend more time working on the side of her. And there wouldn't be anything wrong with spending the whole training session standing in front of her and petting her, but you will have to get to these points at some point in time. And so um, we can kind of do a lot of good with this horse by letting things touch her in more places. And all of a sudden when she can handle these ropes touching her all over like this, uh, putting a halter and lead rope on her seems a lot easier then. So we're gonna to try to work her other side now. And you can see I'm, I'm, I'm kind of putting a firm feel when she takes off because she's, she's got a habit there of just leaving. And that's what Becky was telling us that she kind of experienced with her. And when she decides she doesn't want us on one side or the other, she kind of leaves. And that's what we need to try to help her through here a bit. So I think I'm going to work at this here a little bit with the uh, stick and string so I'll be able to be a little more deliberate with that. She'd kind of gotten okay with me on her left side, but this right side is still, still a bit scary to her. And again, it's a little different than what we normally see is me standing on the side of her here. But because she's kind of gotten okay facing right there, she's dictating too much where we're at and she needs to follow my feel a little bit more and this is just one of the parts of taming that she's got to turn loose to and so I'm going to be real specific about this position she needs to get okay with me in that position so when Becky in their interview talked about her pushing through pressure that's the spot that we're we're talking about and right there I caught her she kind of turned in on me and I kind of bumped her with the stick and you might seem like that's count as that might sound counterintuitive like well if she's nervous and worried about you why would you want to bump her and have her run into the stick but it's because when she turns in like that it's a very strong prey animal behavior and she's actually in a better mindset now if you look at her now she's walking she's being curious about the string around her she's thinking this is the mindset that we want to the mental state that we want to have her stay in longer and longer and so by letting her run into the stick when she tried to whirl around and act like a prey animal, we actually interrupted that thought pattern a little bit more. It's no different than if you're trying to do something new and you're telling yourself, I can't do it, I can't do it, it's gonna be terrible. Well then don't be surprised when it probably is. <laughs> but if you can interrupt yourself and say, actually, I believe this can work, this is gonna be fun, this is simple, this is easy, you can actually interrupt your own mental thoughts. And so that's all I did there is I kind of interrupted that thought and said, actually, acting like a prey animal is more uncomfortable than trying to understand what it is I'm, I'm offering you. Good. Again, normally you would stand in front of them and do a lot of this stuff in front, but I'm going to keep asking her to change sides so that 
She's going where I want her to go. It's kind of on my terms and I'm spending more time on her side. I feel like that's a really important concept for this mare to, to get better at. Okay, so there's the exposure tools. Now, and I, I'm kind of doing what I would call a sand, kind of a sandwich effect. I started off with some easier things, then I went to some harder things, and now I'm gonna go back to some easier things. And so after doing all that, theoretically, me, her following me around looks pretty easy at this point. <laughs> when, you know, 10 minutes ago, that was kind of a win, um, just, to, just to get to here. So then I'm gonna practice stopping and then approaching her and then just petting her. And the goal is that we can finish on this being more of a sweet spot. But I'm pretty confident that she's kind of learned to, to push through pressure in those moments right there. And so we kind of got to convince her that that's not going to work anymore. There's a little lick and chew. So I'm asking her to yield her hindquarters right now. We're feeling the halter. And then I'll stop doing that and I'll switch to petting her. And again, the goal is for her to get sweeter and sweeter on me being in here close. This is what's been really hard for her to accept. And see, she's wanting to put me on her left eye, but it's this right eye that she's a little bit more worried about. So I want to make sure that I end up here. But you can see how this, you know, she got worried about it when I first tried it, but you can see that this is a softer, slower thing to do than exposing her to the ropes being everywhere. This is a little simpler pattern, a little simpler puzzle. Um, but this starts getting her, her used to me being in closer and moving around her. Now, there's, there's plenty of videos where you guys have seen other people do this. And one of the things that is important to understand is you can do this really slowly, and if you're newer at this, I would recommend you do it slowly. But just because you do it really slow doesn't mean somebody else can walk up and pet the horse. <laughs> okay, you have to build depth of understanding of this. So when I'm doing this, I'm trying to move at, at close to a regular level of intensity as I can. Because if I move around her super, super slow and end up being kind of sneaky, then she might get to where I could halter her, but nobody else can. <laughs> And for a horse like her, she needs to get to where anybody could walk up and halter her. And so I'm not trying to prepare her for somebody who's paying attention and is moving ultra, ultra slow to be able to, to, to pet her and halter her. Um, I'm working at a pace that I think is kind of a reasonable expectation. So I'm deliberately moving my hand around, petting her, not just going like, you know, kind of creepily slow. Um, that's an important thing to note. You can see how she constantly wants to put herself in a defensive position. And if you've seen any of my other videos, you hear me talk about it a lot, whether you're um, on the ground working with them or you're riding them, it's natural. Every horse is born with this like counter bend where they put their ribs into you and they tip their nose to the outside. And if they don't do that, somebody trained them to not do that anymore. Um, or they're a very, very left brain horse that's not worried about that. But pretty much every horse is gonna need to learn how to do that. And you can just see it with her where whenever I go into a position, see if I go over here, you can see she's kind of shaped this way towards me. <clears throat> and so if I walk around here, I change that shape here by doing this hindquarter yield. And then watch when I first approach her on her other side. Now she's looking and chewing, so she might not do it as bad. But right there, so you can see she's got one foot out the door, kind of taking that counter bend. And then she also would like me to switch sides. There, and you can see she thought about drifting away, but it took a lot less to kind of bring her back in. So, so this is kind of the recipe that JLo needs for maybe another five sessions or so before I really would do anything new with her. I would just get her really good at these things and keep advancing it and uh, just getting them more and more comfortable. So thank you guys for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and we'll see you on the next one. <music>